and welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangya. Today is a very special interview. We are going to talk to the founder of LNL Partners, formerly known as Luthra and Luthra. I know you would all know the name. It is Mr. Rajiv Luthra himself who joins us today on Legally Speaking. Uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Rajiv Luthra on the show today. Welcome, Mr. Luthra. Thank you, Tarun. It's a pleasure. Uh, if you see the journey of uh, India's post-liberalization growth to become a $2.78 trillion economy and your journey uh, starting from as a very humble law firm with a few lakhs in capital to one of India's leading names in the law firm business, which is also well known globally. Uh, the name of LNN Partners, I am sure that any investor looking at this country uh, can't miss this firm. And it is also, in a sense, related to your persona and your personality. You were a very visible face of the firm in corporate boardrooms, uh, in the political area, in the policy space. In about two minutes, could you share with me, how do you look back at your journey since 1990? So you want me to make a Maggie noodle in two minutes. Now, I want to go a little bit, I need a little bit more time. Quickly, I'll tell you, it's... Uh, it's a little relevant. So I started my life as a, a, a tax practitioner and as an article clerk, as an article clerk in um, uh, uh, a CA firm. This was in 77, 78, uh, when I started getting my first few cases uh, and I was appearing before the tax authorities. My father was in the Air Force, so no credibility, no credentials. And as I continued uh, this practice, I, I started enjoying, uh, and I had rights of audience up to the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. No rights of audience in the High Court because I was not a lawyer. No rights of audience to the Supreme Court. So midstream at the age of 31, I did my law while running my practice. I had clients like Rolls-Royce, British Aerospace, uh, and I was lucky to get them at a very young age. Uh, yeah, British Aerospace is now BAE Systems, Standard Chartered Bank, HSBC, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Exxon Mobil, blah blah blah. I did my law in India, and then uh, I realized that I didn't know any law because, uh, unfortunately, at that time, law uh, was attendance, and uh, attendance was a bottle of rum. <laughs> I don't mind saying that very clearly. But then I went in, when I set up my firm in 89-90, I actually then went for seven summers to Harvard Law School to actually learn project finance, to learn m and and all of these newer areas of practice of law, which weren't either taught in India or known in India at that time. I was very fortunate I did that because then India opened up in 91. Suddenly, project finance became, you know, uh, the song of the week. So did m and and all of these. So my whole strategy was to try and see where the practice of law is going. Sometimes I got it right. Sometimes I got it, you know, five years later. But I had the knowledge and I would build the knowledge base and all of that. So there was a little strategy I used. And then as things happened, uh, we became the go-to firm for project finance way back in 92, 93. At one time, I still remember we were tasked with, uh, we were instructed on 52 power projects, a chota firm. I don't think another law firm in the world can boast that. We were doing highways. We, in fact, if you go on the Noida toll bridge from the Delhi side, when you hit the river, just look right. There's a black granite plaque with our name on it. Tell me one bridge in the world that has a lawyer's name on it, <laughs> on the bridge, even today. So we did a lot of uh, things that had not happened in India before, pure non-recourse project finance, et cetera, et cetera. And slowly, slowly made a niche for myself and our firm. And that was very fortunate. There are a lot of good souls, good lawyers, wanting to learn. So I am really the, uh, uh, the face of the firm in a manner of speaking, but it's really my team of over 380 lawyers, 
than about 70 partners who really uh, have done all this work. And that's how we built the firm. I got two points from your answer. A, uh, the time you spent at Harvard, you attribute a lot uh, to it delivering for the firm because you say that it taught you. Could you tell me in about a minute or so, how did Harvard change you as a person, the time spent there? I'll tell you, the quality of education there is mind-boggling. My first professor was Roger Fisher, Getting to Yes, the famous book. And he saw that in me and he said, Rajiv, the next uh, few lectures I'm going to take, you will do with me. And I go, why, Roger? He says, because you have a unique quality in you. When you negotiate, you're probably one of the few people on earth who know how to negotiate when one party is not interested, i.e. government of India. I used to negotiate power purchase agreements, et cetera, et cetera, with the government or with the government instrumentalities. And the, the officers weren't concerned whether they did the deal or no. So we had to use various interesting techniques like making them father, talking to them during tea that, you know, when you're 30 years, you, you, you retire. What will you tell your grandchildren? You did nothing. The problem was, and that the system is like that, if you do something, see, if planes don't fly, none will crash. There'll be no, uh, no delays. So the whole strategy and our whole process is only, if you look at the entire bureaucracy, it's based on what you do wrong. Not, you can do 5,000 things right. Nobody look at it. You don't get double promotions. You don't get any special medals, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, it's a flawed system, but hopefully it's getting better. Uh, tell me from 91 to 96 or say by 99, uh, this law firm under you spawned in how many practice areas? I mean, how many practice areas were you able to achieve within 10 years of liberalization? So that way, I was quite fortunate. Uh, earlier on, I, uh, 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 three youngsters who were doing litigation, I was not a litigator, three youngsters who were doing litigation uh, decided we did the first, what I call an amalgamation of a law firm. It was on a handshake. And we, I was using them for a lot of my outsourced litigation. I said, Sara Kam to me So you might as well shift in. So Bobby Chando, Vijay Sondi, and Sudhir Sharma with four or five other juniors and just shifted to my office in Barakamba Road, where I started 1,500 odd square feet. Now I'm close to 60,000, same building. You have 60,000 square feet of space for a law firm? Yeah, around that, in one building. Then we have in Mumbai, we've just doubled our Mumbai space as well uh, two months ago. Then we have Bangalore and Hyderabad. So that makes for a high, very, very large firm, firm in terms of management of space also. Law firms in India are known for having. There are few, but I think not more than what I can count on my fingers even today. So uh, uh, I want to ask you this. Uh, it is said that you need a lot of good implementation people when you run a law firm. But principally, who you need is a man who brings in the business. Now, you are known as somebody who's a magnet for uh, drawing business. Some attribute it to your personality and networking. Others attribute it to your knowledge. Uh, and they say that, you know, you can be the life of the party also and in negotiations also and can pull business in. Now, if you can tell me in a very freewheeling way, is this an art you developed yourself or is this your personality since, say, childhood that you're able to draw people towards yourself? How did you manage this art of pulling in so much of business with your name and your brand attached to it? Uh, uh, I don't know whether I can explain it in great detail, but uh, I'm a national level sailor. I'm a pretty decent squash player and tennis player. I don't look it. Uh, and I have a pretty decent golfer. So those are the uh, four-odd spots that whenever foreigners were coming to India, they wanted to either spend their afternoon playing tennis. So I'm a member, a life member of the Gymkhana Club in Delhi. I'm a life member of the Delhi Golf Club in Delhi. Uh, I'm a, a member of the, De the Defense Services Sailing Club. So, you know, and these were not accessible to anybody. So I could take them as guests. So once you played five hours of golf with, say, the president of Bank of America, 
He's your buddy for life. And then his network. That's how I started. I would call him and say, you know, I've got so-and-so inquire, so-and-so uh, company. For example, I can name it, International Aero Engines out of Stamford, Connecticut. They were coming to India uh, with the Airbus 320 uh, engines, the V2500s. And uh, when I found that out, I rang up uh, uh, Sir Ralph Robbins, the chairman of Rolls-Royce, and said, can you introduce me? He said, of course, I'm on the board of United Technologies. Straight away, I met the chairman in his room, and he, the president, sorry, and he called the general counsel. So it was a no-brainer. And we did all that work. We set that office up. We set Rolls-Royce's office up in India. We did BA Systems office in India. All of that was done by us. And uh, they've been clients for over 20 years. So I want to ask you, were you the key to India launch for many multinational corporations that if I want to come to India, it's Mr. Luthra and he will ease everything out. We can set it up. Everything will be taken care of. Did you become, your firm become that sort of a thing that leave it to them? Uh, uh, to tell you, uh, I don't know whether we were the go-to, I mean, the only firm. There were some others, surely. But I can tell you in terms of stats that till about 2005, 2006, almost 90% of our legal work was with foreigners. We had very, very few local clients. Then over the years, as the farm expanded, we needed to get some. See, I believe in absolute, absolute quality. For me, quantity means nothing. For me, a 5,000 lawyer firm is a waste of time. But if I have 500 solid, lean, mean machine lawyers, really dedicated and good quality people and happy, see, what, one of my tasks, uh, and re I've been reasonably successful, is to make the organization a happy place. I don't mean smiling and joking and all that. Of course, that too. But take away all the politics. And the way I've done that is my philosophy has been that Law is not a business, it's a profession. Now, if it's a profession, what flows? Ethics, integrity. Money is a byproduct. If I get ethics, integrity right, and I used to, there was a BBC interview, I think in 93 or 94, there used to be a program, I think it was called India Matters, and this lady came to interview me, and because we were the first, really the first pure business law firm in India. So she was chatting with me, and then, you know, typical good quality journalist, and you learn them better than I do, started asking me, so what are your vision? What is it that you want? What's your big game? And what's your dream? This, that. So quality, integrity, everything will flow. And when all of these things happen, money automatically flows in. Once you provide quality, once you do good turnaround, integrity also means turnaround, also means knowing the law, all of that. And people can trust you. I'll give you one small example. In one of our meetings, that you know, I, I would like be the father teaching all my kids. I'd go to Harvard Law School, learn certain things, come back and teach them. In one of our meetings, one of the lawyers, you know, a lot of lawyers think that they're next to God. So he says, sir, you know, this fellow called me and asked me which car to buy. To Menika, yeah, that's very good. How can that be good? I'm a lawyer. I'm a broker. I'm a salesman. I said, my friend, that means you're a trusted advisor. Even trust your judgment on which car to buy. Take that as a huge positive. So, you know, so a lot of this metamorphosis, if I can call it, that happened. And we were fortunate, yeah, there was a, a Tarun. It was virgin country. I had no precedence. I had nobody look. I've never had a senior, by the way. Huh. Uh, so it's good or bad, I don't know. But uh, I've always been managing partner and founder <laughs> from day one. But I want to know that to, to people, and this question is for a lot of law firm managing partners who will watch this show. You come across as a larger-than-life figure uh, to people in the law business and otherwise. And... You know, to people who do good work also, there are many people who do work, do good work, even you will agree. But that doesn't mean that uh, clients walk into them. So do you mean that these are some things which a lot of people don't get it? You can do good work, 
but you need to be someone like mr rajiv luthra and a few others in this country to drive in the work because in this business that is very important because a lot of people can deliver but what is in your view uh, the qualities that makes people the stars for example you and four five firms that were created absolute stars in the business since i'm talking to one of them which is you i should ask you this see the way i see it is uh, that should be a natural if you are going to go and hard sell i mean we have our own rules of non soliciting etc etc but if you can give some good quality value advice on the go that makes a lot of difference so for that you need to have the knowledge and not only the so called clauses in in a, in a book of law but also how the system works where is it that you can get stuck and possibly find solutions see a lawyer is can read you the law or a lawyer can say look this is the law but in the realm of law if you structure it like this and it will be legal and we can test it or if we test it you will have some issues there are the negatives so we lay it out first the whole story works in my view and it it should not be a hard sell and i don't know whether i'm a magnet or a, a piece of iron but uh, yes i have many many friends all over the world and you building relationships uh, is very important for me like most of my friends and chairmen and heads of companies and even in my firm every birthday i personally call them whether it's an office boy or a senior partner but so but that I, I, is the bond going how was the journey of your firm in those 10 years how did these years go for you so we started uh, getting involved in very big ticket items uh the private equity uh, market opened up large private equity funds the blackstones of this world the sequoias of this world started investing big time in india so we were right there and uh, we had all the skills in terms of tax in terms of structuring in terms of uh, investment promotion uh, approvals uh, in terms of reserve bank understanding so all the facets that they needed uh, we were just, we were under one roof so i designed the farm as to what a foreigner would need because if i if you remember i told you till uh, Uh, early 2000s we had only mainly foreign clients so my whole structure was unki what is their need and i should be able to fulfill that need under one roof and i i don't mind saying it a lot of lawyers feel embarrassed but we also went and got uh, uh visas for them extending visas for a foreigner working in india that we also had a small group of two people who did that work only so that client was you know was you know in our in our pocket all the time because negotiating india for a foreigner can be tough you think you even at a cost you provided these services so that clients are comfortable yeah i mean i, I can tell you this much that uh, the earlier years of my practice of law were the most frustrating you can imagine but also the most exciting because what i call missionary profits when you cut a forest you're going to get a few scraps by the branches but then the forest is yours and that open area that you cut i mean nowadays it's not good to cut forests but i don't i just mean it as an example uh, uh and that's so that's missionary profits you like if somebody starts a new business it gets the first mover advantage now there is other side to your personality about being uh, the director on the board of hsbc uh you served there and some other big boards mm. how carefully have you cultivated your networking skills and persona because in addition to managing a law firm which is a huge law firm having so much of work even outside must be taking a lot out of you uh before covid it was a challenge i see i i serve on the i'm the only indian that serves on the board of ciac the singapore international arbitration council i serve on the uh, advisory board of city of london i serve on the board of dlf i serve on the board of network 18 tv 18 and a number of other boards some london main board listed companies too 
travel those days was a, a, a hell of a challenge. But luckily, you know, with the uh, advent of uh, technology, with the cell phones and all of that, I could do a lot of work on the fly. With COVID, uh, he, that's the big positive I see. It's a no-brainer. I've been holding the last year and a half almost, a little bit more. I've been holding uh, literally from where I'm sitting. Most of my meetings, I go up to my home in the mountains in Tasoli. And it's as good there. Uh, so it's a challenge. So I don't take too many boards. I try and keep it limited because whatever I like, whatever I do, I like to get fully involved. Even with a client, I become family. Even if I find that nothing to do with our instruction, but I find the client might be interested in this situation, I'll be the first one to send him a, a note. So, so the beauty guys, of what you tell me is you're thinking about the client all the time. All the time. All of us in the firm, that's the training. Okay, okay. Now we'll come to a bittersweet aspect of your uh, life where uh, you had a long-standing partner, Mr. Mohit Saraf, who left the firm recently. Uh, now, having this illustrious journey and building up such a big business, and when such an incident happens, uh, I know it would have been a very emotional moment. How does it feel when you have to go through a, this patch in your life? Uh, how did you take it personally and how you grew out of it? Uh, very frankly, Tarun, the matter is sub -judice, but I'll quickly give you just some overview. Uh, Mohit Saraf joined the farm as an A0, an associate. He used to get a small salary, less than $100. And that's audited. It's been put in the uh, court so I can talk about it. As he went, uh, where I found him to be a, a youngster with a lot of zest. But there were a lot of negatives, and everybody has. Even I have negatives. And we worked on them and things got. And I always felt in my mind, heart of heart, that he means well. So for me, I was getting on in age. I was now in my 40s. I said, let me now expand the firm. So that's how the uh, Mr. Saraf came into uh, the firm. Of course, he calls himself a founder. I founded the firm in 89, 90, when uh, Mr. Saraf was not even in, probably just in college. And he joined me in 94, 95 as an associate at A0. So as that grew... Blue. I am even today, I can tell you with a hand on my heart, I don't know why. Why did this happen? But I am a pretty positive person other than COVID. So I thought I, I was flummoxed for a, a few days. But then I said, Koi baat nahi, yaar. So I actually, this is also sent a file in court where I said, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my socks. You have made me live a fuller life. Because a full life is all kinds of experiences. I never thought I'll get this kind of an experience, but I've got that too. So all for the better. And, it, you know, there are a lot of learnings from this. The big learning that I got was emotional quotient, emotional intelligence, the power of it and the lack of it. And how lack of it creates all these negative things. But anyway, I wish them well. They've, uh, they've set up a firm first Mohit left, then a few other partners left. I wish them well and lots of good luck. And why not? Only thing I can tell you is that since then, voluntarily, no headhunters, 131 new members have joined in the last six months in my firm. 131? 131. Nine new partners. Sorry, 12 new partners. I've already joined the firm, no headhunter. And 22, 22 ex Lutherites have come back who were with us in the beginning, then went on to become uh, national heads of practice of large law firms. I don't want to name them, but large law firms and the, some of the best law firms returned back. So, in a lighter vein, I call it Dharvapsi. Now, from 2021. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that uh, his dream is to make India a $5 trillion economy. A lot of economists also say that this is going to happen in future. Uh, where do you see the role 
LNL partners will play in this journey to India becoming a five trillion dollar economy because the numbers of the projects and the numbers and the investment amount is only going to get bigger and bigger. Since you have this much of office, so many partners, so much of capabilities, how poised are you to take on this challenge uh, to play a role in this five trillion dollar journey? See, one is I believe this five trillion or ten trillion or whatever the numbers are. At the current state of play, they are a myth, and I'll tell you why. We have a fatal flaw in our country. I know I'm not a political person, but uh, people talk of uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi and all of that. If you remember in the old days, we used to have IDFC, we used to have ICI, IFCI, we used to have IDBI, we used to have ICICI. These were all long-term funding institutions. Now, what does India need? Let's do a simple analysis. India needs infrastructure. What does infrastructure need? Money and long-term money. Till we don't have a system. Now, if you look at, just go back three, four years. I know there could have been some frauds and all that, but look at the general bankruptcies. They've all been infrastructure companies because there's a fatal flaw and I have a solution. I'll give you the solution right now. We have, as per government announcement, we have over a trillion dollars in foreign exchange lying outside illegally. There was a reason why it went there because the tax rates are very high and so people send the money out. Now you bring the money back and they put you in jail. I mean, yes. that's the law. Yes. Why? We need money. Now, so here's my solution. You say anybody wants to bring any amount of money. Bring it in. The authorized dealer, that is the bank, will deduct 15% of that as tax. Day one. So let's say we get a trillion dollars in. $150 billion will come into your exchequer day one. Suppose all of it comes in. Then... 35% you give it to the person who brings it in to do whatever they want. They'll obviously not only buy jewelry for their girlfriends or bleak boyfriends, they will also invest. Yes. 50% we make a 30-year bond, like the Eagle bond in America, like the Hermes bond in Europe, like the Korean bond in Korea. You look at the countries. This is not a rocket science. They all build their infrastructure like this with long-term money. Now think. 30%, 50% chala gaya aapka bond me compulsory. You give 200 basis points over LIBOR. India gets cheap money the, uh, uh, and it becomes equity. So if you have, let's say, half a trillion dollars as equity, you leverage that six, seven times. Your entire infrastructure is sorted out day one. So if you build your roads properly, you have access to villages, you won't crowd Delhi. You won't crowd Mumbai or Pune. Your ports, you know, today we take nearly 35, 40 days to get goods in and goods out in a ship. We could reduce that to one day like they've done in Singapore. These all examples are there. And not because I look like one, I want to call them elephant bonds. Because that'll be a unique thing for India. Elephants are... Uh, and it's eagle bond. They throw up America, make guess one of this sort of infrastructure. So that's what we need to do. Now, coming back to where we'll play a role, we have in-depth knowledge of how project financing, non-recourse, power purchase agreements, roads. We've done many, many roads in India, many, many bridges, many, many ports. We've also done satellite financing as a firm. And number of similar areas, power plants, you name it, whether it's renewable energy, whether it's uh, combined cycle plants, whether it's uh, wave, wave energy, uh, solar energy, all of that. Now, here's one more example. Disaster waiting to happen. We are right now building solar farms like there's no tomorrow. Yes. Now, 20 years later, sir, when those solar cells finish, how will you get rid of them? Where will you throw them? Has anybody thought about it? And why we don't think about it, I don't know. Because that's a disaster waiting to happen. 
and 20 years will go like this. Yes. My home here and in Kasoli fully sold apart. Not now, 10 years ago. Now I'm worried that that's all me. I can't have to go and go. <clears throat> yes. You know, we have to think through things. We have to think through the entire process. So, okay, we've got this. This is a great idea. But why are we not getting our economy growing? We've grown till here. Now we're getting a spate of bankruptcy, a spate of this. Let's analyze why. It's not that difficult. Mr. Rutra, thank you so much. You, uh, in fact, shared your journey, your experience at Harvard, uh, the knack, uh, and your innate nature on how clients do to the firm, the kind of work you did, uh, your aspiration and your ideas to draw investment in India to and grow, grow our economy size. And happy you shared it with us in a very free and frank format as you are by nature. I would like to do a few more shows on, basically on the last answer which you gave me about India's infrastructure journey. Very interesting point. I think would like to dedicate a show on such an issue. I think one answer isn't enough for the idea you gave me. But I am uh, deeply thankful for you for sparing time at a short notice and joining me on this show on Legally Speaking with Tarun I appreciate your joining us. Thank you so much. I just, I just want to add one thing. I did say I'd never had a senior. Actually, I was not right. So I started, I didn't have a senior. So I started following a gentleman called Fali Narim. He didn't know that I was following him because I would go, those days there were no videos, this, that, or YouTube. I used to go and sit in his, in his court or sit when he'd give a lecture. And just because I thought he was the most ethical, highest integrity person. After five, six years, uh, I met him on a flight coming back from Singapore. He and his wife, Babsi, was coming from Australia. So I went and carried his bags and I told him that I've made a guru home, I love you home, you know, all that whole story. And we became the thickest of friends. We were, of course, briefing him regularly. And then I have a Bharat Ratna. I'm Babsi and Fali's lawyer. Thank you so much for sharing this anecdote. I'm sure all our viewers will like this, to know this. Thank you so much. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.